Hey guys, it's the one and only Bougie Marie. And eat that ass today. Nothing but eat your ass after this. I got a problem. What? What am I getting my ass eaten? Shit fire anyways. Alright. Nothing but eat after the video. There's no shake on them. Um and today we're to trap you the Disney World Rico inside the largest crew takedown in Florida history. Now, before we get to this video, make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, for notifications, and then get straight into it. When you come to Orlando, you think about Disney. Even though we ain't never been to Disney and shit ain't sweet, but people think about Disney when they when they talk about Florida. When we think of Orlando, we think of Disney World, we think yeah, of Orlando yeah. Magic. Why everybody get that cuss up to Disney and all that? I don't know. I guess that's just how they see it from the outside. Well, the tip, FBI typically doesn't telegraph our moves. What I can tell you is that these two gangs, the 438 gang and the Army gang, have got our attention now. The other five already in custody are responsible for nearly two million dollars in stolen property, fifty-nine stolen vehicles, and nineteen stolen firearms. The prominent people at the top, just between this those eight people, are responsible for two hundred and thirty felony charges. That's Aquavius Smith, better known as Glock Nine. Just him himself has been arrested for fifty-two felonies. What is up, everybody? It's been far too long. The last episode was in Florida, and for this video, we gotta return there once more. This time, to Disney World's Orlando, where folks witnessed one of the largest RICO cases in state history, Operation X, take 34 people down from two separate crews. To show you what this looks like, the entire Bobby Shmurda and GS9 indictment was 63 pages. This RICO case in Florida How is 700 was pages long. How long was it? Is this recent? Uh... So I think 2020 to now. Mm. Oh, with the feds stalking people at concerts and putting informants in place to make controlled phone calls. One side, AFNF or the Army Gang, is led by the popular rapper Glock 9. The face of the other side, 438, is well known rapper Hot Boy. Both of them were good friends coming up in the industry together till it all went left, escalating into this year long war that came crashing down quick with folks hanging out the windows of cars, wielding AK-47s in broad daylight, hitting daycares and memorials. The city saw 30 back-to-back -back shootings in six months, and it forced Orlando to bring in the MBI, or Metropolitan Bureau of Investigations, basically Florida's version of the FBI, who built this whole case using wiretaps, Instagram, and evidence they found on people's Yeah, gotta be careful with y'all Sometimes your thousands of photos and videos that map out drug routes from Orlando to California with folks taking trips Bruh. back and forth, smuggling hundreds of thousands of dollars in suitcases, flying girls out separate to bring the product home where they launder the profits through cars, guns, and show dogs. Glock 9, who signed a $2 million deal with Young Money and Birdman when he was only 18, now faces 52 charges, including frauding the government out of $10,000 through a series of PPP loan scams that got intercepted <laughs> when he tried showing it off to his friends on Instagram. And with a like... news drop of a pending Rico charge, his once friend turned rival, Hot Boy, decided to go on the run and then turned himself in, but then went on the run again after they revoked his bond. Wanted gang member on the front of your address. Right. Right. Uh, we're getting into all this, but first, check out my song of the day. This is a new one from my guy Millie's. Let's go. A lot of rappers richer than me did this shit with less skill, so I know I come back up to most of them. I've ever covered, and in order to understand it, Why? we gotta travel right. to the tourist capital of America, home of Walt Disney Entertainment, with 70 million visitors coming in and out each year, Orlando, Florida. But there's a part of the city they don't million? show, the infamous ghettos of West Orlando, backcountry roads, dry industrial land with scattered housing complexes and homes. It may not look like much, but it got so bad in the 80s and 90s, they gave it the nickname, Orlando. It's a war going on. In Orlando, and I'm not saying like a big boy, it's just a war amongst ourselves and all these killings. But three artists from there were making a way out. Glock 9, Hot Boy, and Pooty, each from a different neighborhood with a unique Florida sound. And where most cities have problems when three artists are coming up, 
these three were helping each other, sharing blog connections on World Star, Say Cheese TV, making songs together. We all was like tied in, bro. Like we were like brother, brother, brother. We sleep with these jibs, like every day be around these same jibs. I don't know shit when left. Yeah, that shit when left. The first to really blow up was Glock 9, with his massive song called 10%, hitting 35 million views the summer of 2018. He had such a raw talent Dang. and energy that two months later, Birdman and Young Money would sign him to a $2 million deal. It inspired his friends Hoppo and Pootie to take music more serious. But Glock 9 was unpredictable. He was wild. You tell him there's rules, he was breaking them. You would have been in jail more than 10 times? Yeah. You're 18 right now? Yeah. You've been in jail 12 times? Yeah. Arrested for the possession of burglary tools. Yeah. Like, yeah. He went from stealing cars in GTA at 11 to snatching real cars at 13. Is and after signing this $2 million deal with. No, he was in playing. GTA. He was playing GTA, snatching cars, to doing it real life at 13. Minutes. Birdman, Glock 9 was getting picked up twice a year and beating every case thanks to Young Money's private lawyers. He even mm. bragged through text messages and you paid him enough money? four separate bonds at once thanks to his defense attorney. Mm. Family, like, all they know, I get in trouble. I'm, 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 I'm hot here. I'm, I'm gonna crash. They don't understand me. They don't get what I was doing it for. 2018, the year he blew up, his friend Hot Boy was serving two extra years in a Florida detention center for wrecking the place. But one day they gave him a 24 hour pass to go home and he went straight to the studio to record music with Glock 9 and Putin, creating this song Hooligan, which would have been a massive record, except they would never release it. Glock 9 was burning bridges left and right. He had a falling out with Say Cheese TV, one of the largest bloggers and platforms to exist, who's promoting him. Poison, you got more money than me. Poison, you ain't gonna last long no way, nigga. That's why your own niggas switching up on you because that money gets to your head. You haven't made it yet, bro. By the time Hot Boy got out of juvie, on the outside, Glock 9 and Pooty started going at each other, leaving Hot Boy caught in the middle. Why is there no Hot Boy Glock 9 records, no Pooty uh, Hot Boy records? Shit went up. Shit went up. You being cool both of them. You think you could kind of squash that beat? So he was in jail and the other two was going at it? That's what they were saying? Yeah. But with the release of these Rico papers, the feds paint a picture of a bunch of crews competing to further their own interests. It wasn't just music they were into, it was all sorts of money schemes in the criminal underworld they had hands in. Glock 9 had his own clan, All Friends No Family, or AFNF, who mainly stay in the Mercy Drive area of West Orlando, which they say was built on a cemetery. It has mandated 24-7 police patrols. And AFNF was organizing like a war was about to happen. Texting each other gang structures and rules, they had a system where a female associate would legally purchase guns for everybody in the crew who was a convicted felon. And when a Kentucky rapper named 2K Baby came to visit Orlando, AFNF robbed him of his jewelry, taking the grills from his mouth, his money, then went on Instagram Live at the Mercy Drive Apartments, challenging his folks to come get it back. This the only way you gonna come in, the only way you gonna pull out. What you gonna do? Let me see where you at. You already put in the The brick! The brick! The same place this shit happened at. Fort Mercy Drive! Exactly. Hey, my homeboy say you want the chain back up. How much y'all gonna spend for it? By October of 2019, the tension with the various crews was rising. Pootie dropped this song, Address It, a freestyle where he was dissing Glock 9, saying they both bleed the same and that it was war. And right around then, the Orlando police began putting in surveillance early. They knew shit was starting to boil over. Equally, the crews knew they were being watched. They even set up counter surveillance to watch the feds watching them, <laughs> posting videos to Instagram with middle finger emojis pointed at hidden squad cars in the bushes. Um, By the time 2020 rolled around, there were agents watching Hot Boy at all his concerts, with officers stalking Instagram feeds as well because they couldn't believe the money people were pulling in. Hot Boy, of course, had a real rap career making legitimate music money, but the feds were watching him make plays on his cell phone, texting people for t-shirts, which was a code word for 100 pounds of coke that was to be broken up and resold. See, these wiretaps didn't only reveal what the rappers and crews were doing, it went all the way to the source of supply for the gangs in the city, specifically Hot Boys 438 gang from the Silver Star, Pine Hills area of West Orlando. As the feds wiretapped the most prominent narco trafficker in the city who was doing business with them, an Orlando kingpin who bi-weekly was smuggling bulk US currency to the tune of 200 grand in suitcases 
and using girls as mules to fly down. Bro, how would they not Cali like them so many they don't the feds intercepted texts where they were telling each other to save these messages as a reminder that they were about to be millionaires. But with the feds monitoring warehouses, dodging lookouts left and right, the beef between Glock 9's side and Pootie and Hopboy was really about to escalate a few months later in April at a house party where Glock 9's best friend would shoot Hopboy's right hand man, Wolf Luma, killing him. This was Pootie's good friend too. The event brought Hopboy and Pootie much closer. 11 days after, they had a funeral for Wolf Luma where Hopboy filmed this iconic music video at the service with everybody dressed in all black. Later that same day, they all went back to Pootie's neighborhood to hold a vigil for the friend who was killed. But their rivals, AFNF, found out. Driving over to the memorial in a small, dark SUV, they began shooting into the crowd that was gathered, hitting Pootie and three others, killing a pro football prospect who had just signed with Louisville University. Jeez. Investigators say this was retaliation just for Glock 9's friend getting arrested for the shooting of Wolf Luma. The very next month, 90,000 people tuned in for the live stream of the funeral for this 18-year-old football player who was killed. There was a chilling moment when the bishop quieted the whole room and said, no suspect has been arrested yet, but folks are sitting here knowing who did it. This has to stop. See, Glock 9 and others in AFNF had set up this network of unemployment scams across various states in the country with a database of names, addresses, and credit scores all saved on Glock 9's phone. He was using these scams to pay for the bonds of lower ranking members that got jammed up. That way they could fund this war for a long time, choosing to discuss business over FaceTime to prevent the feds from listening in. Both the 438 gang and AFNF had hierarchies and subsets. Both of them were competing as the feds watched 438 members boast through text message that they had enough money and guns to do what they wanted and that made AFNF jealous. By the summer of 2020, the beef even spilled out of town into Jacksonville, Florida, with Glock 9 putting out this song on the 1st of July called Criminal Minds. And in it, he says his enemies were clicking up making teams. He was actually talking about the well-known rapper Fulio out of Jacksonville. How you watch your mama get pumped? You got shot in the ass. And you wrote a statement. Oh, baby, baby. That's Captain Sam. He got shot in the ass. <laughs> All because Fulio would take a photo with Pootie, and this made Glock 9 mad. So he started dissing Fulio's deceased friends, and it caused Fulio's enemies from Jacksonville, like Queso, to then click up with Glock 9, where there was even almost a massive brawl at a mall in Atlanta when Queso crossed paths with Pootie, and things were seconds away from turning dangerous. Holy oh, can't stop all y'all. Y'all get shoot back on but back in Orlando, the OPD was concerned there would be a string of shootings very soon, and they were right. Four days into July, police arrived at a house in West Orlando with reports of gunshots. They found Glock 9's car with dark tinted windows riddled in bullets, and him nowhere to be found. Listening in on phone calls, the feds learned of new strategies AFNF was using to avoid police when they were going on missions. They were riding around in rental vehicles with dark tints to see if they would get pulled over frequently in case they had to gun it in a high-speed chase. They were even gonna put white boy stickers on vehicles so the police would think it was white people in the car and not try and stop them. Four days after they found Glock 9's car abandoned with bullet holes in it, one of his friends who went by the name Baby Joker was driving around deep in 438 territory looking for rivals to tag. They pulled in at a place where one of Hot Boy's good friends stayed at, driving a gray Dodge Challenger, and began firing at folks, with people scattering all over the yard. Hot Boy's friend reacted quickly, running inside to grab his Draco, and came back, shooting at Baby Joker in the gray Dodge Challenger, which at this point was stranded in the middle of the road with the driver's hands all shot up, unable to get away. Baby Joker was dead. The craziest part, Hot Boy's friend, the guy they were aiming at, was someone they knew since they were kids. This particular shooting would get referenced in a lot of music as 438 boasted about this failed hit attempt. In his song Left Lonely, Hot Boy tells Glock 9 directly, your little stepper ran down and he died. Hot Boy was blowing up and doing songs with Lil Baby, he even signed to 100k management, the same guys who managed King Von and YMW Melly. And there were other artists from the Silver Star 438 region, like Cut and Reese, who was getting quite popular, getting song placements in Madden 2K games. He was even one of the rare artists who was able to get Chief Keef to do a music video with him 
The feds had theories. Glock 9 was jealous. Reese's career was taking off. One day, Glock 9 blasted over to Reese's house with rifles and pistols in the car, leaving it riddled with bullets. Witnesses told detectives Glock 9 was trying to eliminate the competition. The very next day, Reese would retaliate back, going with five other 438 members to Glock's aunt's house where he was sleeping at, and they left her house riddled in bullets as well. This particular feud was crazy as the police counted five different attempts where Glock 9 tried to take Reese's life in a matter of months, including a time Jeez. where Reese was filming a music video in his purple Hellcat and was being followed by AFNF members who pulled up next to him in traffic and started shooting. Reese shot back and managed to escape, but then crashed into an oncoming vehicle and had to abandon the purple Hellcat with busted up legs. With up all this death and violence happening in the city, Orlando finally hit up the Metropolitan Bureau of Investigations for help. They needed 18 different agencies to collaborate. And the tipping point, of course, was the infamous shootout at the Millennium Mall. If you want the city to act, do something where their money is at risk, in a public space with loads of businesses and wealthy people. On October 8th of last year, Orlando's luxury mall of Millennia was a scene of chaos as OPD officers responded to a shooting that broke out in the parking lot. It was three against four, Glock 9 and three others versus three 438 members. On surveillance video, you see the 438 guys leaving the mall, getting into a white BMW, and then rolling the car slowly with shooters positioned behind the car doors, firing at Glock 9 with his people, who were taking cover behind their own car, with bystanders running everywhere as security rushed to evacuate the mall. And despite a hail of gunfire, nobody actually got hit. But now, the feds were getting more search warrants and surveillance than ever before, confiscating cell phones left and right, where they found people's internet history, how to turn semi-automatic guns into fully automatic guns easily, numerous Google searches on phones, looking up specific shootings that happened in the Central Florida area. Meanwhile, the police were meeting with confidential informants who knew all about the 438 gang, their members, their inner workings, everything. The informants told them of $60,000 hits being placed on people's heads and recommended the police act swiftly because more people were gonna die. And the rest, well, the rest of the story you know now. 34 people from two rival crews brought down in Operation X. And before I let you go, people always ask me what beats are in the video. I've listed the fantastic producers in order in the description below. And for the intro beat, I teamed up with Chris Rich to make an exclusive beat pack focused on that dark, ominous sound. The pack is called Rich Stories, and the link's- That's fucking wild. Bro. Fucking wild. Uh, it was interesting, but- It's very interesting. Like, I was into that, like, jeez. That's wild. Fame really do change people. Yeah. Like, fame changed yeah. a lot of people, but sometimes fame, a lot of people don't let the fame change them. Mm -hmm. Like, but that's when you get fame, and that's when people go, oh, hey, hey, right. where was you at when I was down below? Right. When I invited you to, oh, right. but I'm, oh, you wanna, bye. That's why I have friends. I barely got family at that because I don't mess with them folks <laughs> at all. Yeah, have like multiple phones and shit like that, and always collect your history, bro. You never know when the feds gonna tap in on your shit. I'm, I'm surprised they ain't got more seeds to tap in on iPhone. I'm re they 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 be looking. They don't need no damn warrant. You you ever heard of the no knock warrants like? That shit, that was that's still funny. I nigga, you just tap in a nigga phone. But um, it's me, Blue Jay. And the one and only Bougie Marie. Uh, if you guys have any first reactions, please put in the comments down below. Like, comment, subscribe, share, turn on your post notifications, and our social medias will be in the description down below. Mm -hmm. And we're out, guys. I'm about to get naked. Keep telling supporters bye. I'm about to get naked. Now. And I can leave. We're gonna keep the camera rolling.
Bye guys.